So, I purchased this Mercedes GT63 S from auction, sold as seen. It was declared as a non-runner. Being a 2021 plate car, I assumed it couldn't be too bad. While working one of these easily retail at £120,000, I thought why not risk it for £86,000? Can't go wrong, right? At the end, it turned out that it needed a full engine stripped down and rebuilt due to overheating. But even after that, it's been quite a journey so far and has had more issues to follow. Previously, we rectified the traction control light issue and we've had an issue with the bank two side of the engine. On the last video, we were on the brink of giving up. Or were we? On today's video, we find out the fate of the Mercedes GT63S. So let's get straight into it. All right, guys, today we're back on the Mercedes GT63S. Where we left the car last time was we started the car up and had the same follow codes even after re-timing it. We basically confirmed that it's not a timing error and it's more to do with a mechanical fault. Something in this engine is causing the timing to be thrown out on the passenger side bank. My guess is it's the camshaft adjuster on the inlet side, which is this one here. Remember there's an inlet and an exhaust camshaft, right? When we built the engine back up, the timing was thrown out on the inlet side, which is this one here. That's the reason why the timing has jumped. However, since we're there anyway, I thought it's wise to change the timing chain tensioner and the chain at the same time because so much strip down required to go back to it if it's not the adjuster. So in this box, I have the timing chain adjuster. Here's a brand new timing chain. These are all genuine parts from Mercedes and also a brand new tensioner as well. So a few people have commented that we skimmed the cylinder head down and as a result, the timing is going to be out because of that. So let me explain why that wouldn't be the case. We've got a timing chain tensioner here and a chain. Now I want to explain the situation with the cylinder head because what happens when you skim it down here, come down here. So imagine this chain is on this adjuster and it goes around all the way to down there. It's normally fitted like this. Now obviously this tensioner goes in there, straight through and it applies tension on the chain and it keeps it tight so it's not slacked, right? So now if you imagine, yeah, if the head was supposed to be skimmed down all the way, it's going to come down a little bit, right? What's going to happen? This is going to go like this, it's going to get slacked, right? But remember, the tension is still there. What's going to happen is it's going to start coming back out a little bit and it's going to compensate for that slack that it's going to get from the loss of that. The head has now gone down a little bit, chain is slacked. This would then come out and make it back tight again. So that wouldn't cause the issue. Also, for the people that have said that, can they explain why the fault code is not coming from bank one as well? Why is it only from one side when both of the heads were skimmed down to the same level? That's why I think it's got nothing to do with the skimming. Again, a few people have said that the timing chain is stretched. Let me show you something. Brand new timing chain. Old timing chain. Let's put them together. Tell me if they're longer or shorter. Happy with that? It's the same length, right? I'm pulling it, it's tight. So yeah, it's not stretched. We are changing the chain, the inlet adjuster, and a brand new tensioner. And I believe that is gonna resolve the issues on the Mercedes GT63S. So you might ask, if it's the adjuster, why are we changing the chain and the tensioner if we don't think there's anything wrong with it? The reason for that is because the amount of time it takes to assemble everything on and strip it back down, it's just not worth it. I'd rather just pay the extra parts. It's like 250 pounds extra for the tensioner and the chain. I'd rather just get that done. Whatever it is, it doesn't bother me as long as the car is fixed. But we really think it's the adjuster. Here we've got the Audi S3. Remember, this is the first car from my competition. And today, I'm going to announce the winner, Level Clark. What's happening, bro? You good? Yeah, bro. You alright, yeah? Yeah, man. So this is the lucky winner. It's from Birmingham. How many tickets did you purchase? Four, you know. Four. Four. So, as I said before, only four tickets, and now he's got his hands on this stunning Audi S3. How are you feeling? Appreciate it. Blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. Like the car, yeah? Yeah, I love it. For £12, can't complain. Of course, £12. Cheap. £12, he's got his hand on a £10,000 car. 10k for £12. So, yeah, this is the first car of the competition that we've ever done. We're going to move on to bigger and better cars as we go on. What's your plans with the car? Definitely going to keep it. You need to keep it, yeah? Yeah, keep it. Yeah. Modify it a bit more. Modify a bit more, yeah? yeah? What's yeah. your plans? First, definitely a short shifter. Probably change this to probably black. Yeah, black out Honey, a little honeycomb. bit. Make it look the pot. Yeah, man. That's the keys for the car. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. Yeah. No worries, bro. Yeah, man. Enjoy it, yeah? Sounds nice. Sounds good, Sounds yeah? Sounds nice. Give it a few revs. Yeah. 
Here's Lever Clark leaving for Birmingham. He's absolutely chuffed with this Audi S3. Here's to many more competitions. Talking about more, let's have a look at the next car available for my competition. So here is my stunning BMW 4 Series. It's a 430i Grand Coupe, which means it comes with four doors. Look at it. This is stunning. This is the second car to enter my competition. The spec on this car is absolutely massive. Let's do a walk around the car. Being a 68 plate, this is a facelift. It's got the contrasting red interior, leather seats, heated seats, of course, multifunction steering wheel, paddle shifts, eight speed automatic gearbox. This is the GC, so four door model. Look at that. If you look at it, it actually looks like a two door, but with four doors. That's the idea behind this car. This is, however, the 430i. It's not a six cylinder, it's a two litre petrol engine. Let's jump inside and let's have a look. Harman Kardon speakers as well. It's also got the wide screen. Let's have a look. That's got a sat nav in it, Bluetooth connectivity, loads of spec. Very, very nice car to drive. I've even driven this car a few times myself and I can confirm it is a very, very nice car and a very nice place to be. Hi. If you want to get your hands on this car, entries are going to cost only £3.99. The competition has just gone live on my website. So head over to Bruce Comps and check it out. Good luck. We have now installed the new timing chain, the new tensioner, and also the camshaft adjuster. The only thing I gotta do now is pretty much start the car up and we're gonna have to see if it has solved our problems or not. I can't wait to do this, but I got a good feeling. So the plan is to start the car, scan for full codes, delete the existing codes, and then rescan again. Let's do it. Start up. All right, big moment. Okay, let's have a look. Now, if you remember, since the beginning, we've been trying to get this issue sorted out, the sensor rotor adaptation, but there's two other full codes which we've been getting from bank two, which is here. Okay, now we delete the full codes. Let's start it up again. What I'm needing to do is rev it up to about 3000 RPM and hold it because that's usually when the full codes come back. On stationary, the full codes do not come back. So, rev it. Hold it for two minutes, yeah? I can't wait to find out, man. It's a big flipping moment. Look at the state of this car. Okay, that's it. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's scan the car. All I'm gonna say is, I've got a good feeling about this one. Don't let me down. Whatever happens, don't let me down. All right, let's have a look at the report. And there you have it, guys. The full code has not come back. Look, it's gone. It's gone. fixed. It's fixed. Yes, man. Finally. Yes. Finally. We've done it, man. We fixed the GT63S. I can't believe it. Them folks have not come back. The only thing left is these ones here. Pressure sensor 2 and then switch of a valve. And as you can see, the car's stripped out. And that's why we got open circuit, electrical fault and whatnot. All because this stuff are not plugged in. We've got a few sensors here and there. The only thing we're going to have left is one fault code for this car. And it's going to be sensor rotor adaptation has not been performed. This, however, has to be done on the road. We're not going to have to do it in the last parts of this video. It said that once you erase the sensor rotor adaptation, you need to take the car for a test drive. But remember, we had the other full codes from Bang 2, which is why we couldn't do it. But you know what? We smashed it. The GT63S is finally fixed. The only thing we're going to do now is box off the front end and then go on the road and do the rotor adaptation. And I guarantee you, this time, when we hit the road, the car's going to get coded and there'll be zero full codes and this car is going to be flying 640 horses flying i can't wait for that moment it's been a, such a big journey in this car but we made it boost performance for the win just look at this car man i feel sorry for it 21 plate such huge spec it's ready to hit the roads man look at it imagine 4,000 miles on the clock just been parked up for months and we got our hands on it We've been having back and forth issues and it looks like we've come to the end. Finally did it. I've got something to say. I had a switch of the car. Let's address the issues now. 
We had a loads of comments saying, oh, you skimmed the head too much. Of course, it's not going to work. The Mercedes tolerances are not there. Now what? All you experts out there chatting rubbish, saying we don't know what we're doing. That's our proof right now. Next video, the car's going to be on the road and I'm going to show you a clean dash, no engine management lights. That's because we have boost performance. We don't give up. We smash it right to the end and we make sure we get the car back on the road. So you guys are probably thinking, the car's fixed now. What's next? As you can see, we've got about 10 hours of work left at the front end. Box that back off, hit the road, do the rotor adaptation, get a clean dash, and then we'll see what we do with this car. It's 640 bhp stock. Is it loud enough? Not to my liking. I think this is gonna get a stage two package, a B800 package. Stage two with damp pipes, and yeah, we're gonna light the streets with this car. The biggest news of all, I need to let you know that this car is gonna be available on Boost Competition's website one of you guys are gonna get your hands on it. That is exciting stuff. This car retails at 120,000 pounds. And I'm telling you right now, one of my subscribers is gonna get their hands on this car. That's gonna be a madness. I can't imagine who's gonna win this car. It's gonna be a life changing situation for somebody. I'm sure it is. And I can't wait to see what happens. But for now, on Boost Comps, we've got this BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. Make sure you get involved in the competition. It's only £3.99. It's a stunning car, but you know what? I think the biggest news today is that I've got this car up and running again. As I said, it's not rocket science. It's got to be one of those things. He said bang two, it had to be something there. To my understanding, it's got to be the camshaft adjuster because that's the only thing that can throw the timing out. The chain, I showed you at the beginning of this video that the chains were not stretched. We compared it to an old and a new one. Tensioner was as good as new. We compared that too. The reason I changed all three parts is of course, just in case, it doesn't fix the problem, we do all three at once and instead of going back in there again. Because the last thing I want to do is pull more parts in this video because I'm trying to get this car wrapped up and move on to the next project car, which I can't wait to show you guys. That is the end of the video, but I had to add here just how excited I am and how chuffed I am that we've got this car up and running. You know, it's been such a long journey. I've said that already, but I'm so excited. It's Friday today and I'm able to post an update with good news that this car is finally done. Now you guys know who the experts are boost performance. All you hate is bounce.